Chapter 6 Land escape was conquered. It did not stand a chance. The peaceful city had existed in isolated harmony for more than a century, and its defenses were designed to protect against only moderate external nuisances, thieves and nomads, not armies. Once inside the main gates, the invaders overran the township with ease. Vant and Ski avoided capture through sheer tenacity and perpetual movement. They reached the town's entrance undetected and surveyed the situation. The once proud gates that had protected land escape had been forced open. Vant deduced that the violation of the massive steel doors was the source of the quake they had felt while inside the detention center. And that which had done the deed, it now stood before them. A Thalium Titan. The monstrous overseer of the army towered over everything, save for the tallest buildings. Pacing the streets in a relentless vigil, each footstep crumbled the pavement and sent rumbling tremors through the town. Its hands, shaped like hammers, leveled obstructions to clear paths for the soldiers. Vance's eyelids spread open in disbelief. Ski buried her face in Cassidy's fur. Breaking free of his shocked stasis, Vant whipped the crossbeam of a building's exterior and propelled himself to a higher vantage point. He traced the foot soldiers' movements in his brain and identified a methodology to their sweeps, and not a moment too soon. The pattern indicated they would be upon him and Ski in moments. He unraveled a whip to the ground. Ski wrapped it around her hand. Retracting the slack, he gently slung her up to another crossbeam where she sat uncomfortably, but safe. They voiced their astonishment in whispers. Now there's something you don't see every day. That thing's huge. What are we going to do? Well, escape's out of the question. The way out is blocked by a giant, and a direct attack on the soldiers would be suicide. There's too many of them. Just have to wait it out. What if they stay forever? I don't think they will. They're going door to door. I saw evidence of it in Medea, a medical township near the Badlands. It was the same. Bashed in doors, stolen people, aftermath of a battle. Also, look how quickly the forces are moving. It's just model efficiency. He traced their roots with a gauntlet, explaining... They're organized and efficient, systematic. No reinforcements have been posted for occupation. This is a snatch-and-grab job. They're going to fill their pockets and move on. For whatever reason, they're snatching bodies, the living and the dead. Ski cringed. They don't want the town. Vance said in finality. They want the townspeople. You got a knack for this stuff. I've been in a fight or two. I mean, it's smart to know your enemy. Amazing how they act when they think they're alone. You ever seen people walking down the street who think they're by themselves? Nine times out of ten, they pick their nose. That's what we're waiting for. A nose pick. So settle in, it may be a while. Ski tried to make herself more comfortable on her tiny ledge. Vant loosed a bit of slack in his free gauntlet and handed her the coil. Safety harness? Vant nodded. She tied it around her waist. If she fell asleep, it would be a long drop to the pavement. So... She began. So... He answered. Ski eyed the symmetrical laceration on his neck. Mm, what's with the scar? What's with the smirk? Oh, well, this is off to a fine start. Searching for something to do, she toyed with a ring on a chain around her neck. She rubbed it between her fingers. Reese? Yeah. It was buried six feet under with her. I liberated it. Cost me a prison sentence. She held it up. Vance studied the beautiful circle. An engagement band made entirely of diamond. Huh. So she and your father? No. Oh, no. She never married him. He tried. He handed her this ring every day for years, but she never accepted it. Why not? After I was born, she got really sick. Sorry, Ma. Hope I was worth it. But that didn't stop my dad. Every day he proposed to her, even though she always refused. She said no man should marry a dying woman. When I was about four, he couldn't cope anymore. I mean, she was suffering. Losing her mind, she couldn't even recognize me. I cried so much. I used to wipe my tears on her hand. I thought maybe if she felt how sad I was, she'd get better for me. Vant remained respectfully silent. The sun set behind the land escape canopy. As the soldiers persevered in their harvest, 
Their suits reflected the burgundy hues of the sky. The chaos was subsiding. The skirmishes were waning. The streets were growing quieter. So, one day he put the ring on a chain and put the chain around her neck. He told her to hold on to it until he came back. He said he'd bring her a cure, and when he did, she'd have no reason to say no to him anymore. We deserted land escape that very day to search for anything that could save her life. She ran her fingers around the spirals of her tattoo and paused at the dots. Vant assumed each one represented a township visited. You must have seen some bizarre sights. I saw a ton of the outlands, but Dad never let me into the townships. I was too young, but he went into everyone. He'd sneak in like a ghost. He'd scale walls, go underground, use subterfuge, whatever it took. He'd disappear inside for what seemed like ages and then come back out, always empty-handed. And no matter how much I asked, he never, ever told me what went on inside. Yeah, I don't blame him. They're not the friendliest of places. I've been to a few, deserted them all. I'm lucky to be alive. Yeah, I would see it in his face. Each time he'd come out, it was like something died inside him. Worse, the lost time meant wasted life to us. Every failed attempt at finding a cure meant more time away from my mom. We looked for years. Her eyes darkened, and her tone shifted. But hey, now the secret's out, right? Apparently there was another man. Maybe that's why she never married my dad. Vant held his tongue, partly because he was caught off guard, and partly because she may have been right. Why'd you leave? You loved her so much. I was pulled away on business. Are you messing with me? No. Well, I'm all ears. Vance swallowed. I was forced to go. Didn't have a choice. My boss can be very persuasive. It seems like Ree got over me, though. You're pretty clear evidence of that. She probably forgot all about me. I left her a long time ago. How long? 23 years. That doesn't add up. Look at you. I don't understand. Shh. Don't you shush me. Shh. Vant kicked her in the shin and widened his eyes. Ski took the cue and looked down. A dozen soldiers swept the streets below them. Then, commotion in the central hub. Three land escape rebels who had managed to avoid capture worked their way up the fortifications on the city walls to the defensive turrets. In a coordinated attack, they opened fire on the Thalium Titan. Bullets plinked like pebbles off its armor. The giant charged the wall, but the gunners held steady, assaulting it with everything they had. The attack against the Titan was a diversion. Ten men and women who had been concealed in a maintenance tunnel made a break for it, sprinting full tilt toward the open gates. The Titan first focused on the gunners. It approached the wall, drew back its arm, and rammed the structure with its hand. The rebels in the turrets lost their footing. One grabbed a ledge as he fell, dangling from his fingertips. Again, the giant punched the wall. The tremor destabilized the perches. The two other rebels dropped, falling hundreds of feet to the pavement. Another punch, and the last rebel lost his grip. His helpless body met concrete. The fleeing citizens neared the doorway. A battalion of the nearest Thalium soldiers raised their arms, aimed, and fired batons from their wrists. The weapons flew like javelins and thudded against the backs and necks of half the townspeople. The other half seemed to have a clear path out of the town when the hand of the Titan pounded the earth. The blow shattered pavement, and the escapees were lifted off their feet by the shockwave. They smacked back down to the ground and scrambled to get up, but it was too late. The Titan reached the gates in two massive strides. Its limbs, like enormous pendulums, swatted the people back toward the squadron of foot soldiers. The innocents tumbled across pavement. Bones broke, skin scraped, and flesh tore from the friction. The soldiers shouldered the broken townspeople, hauled them to the tube, and then tossed them inside. The collecting of bodies continued for another hour. Soon the township grew still. The soldiers convened around the tube, and a few manipulated it until a wheezing sound could be heard. A gust of wind poured out of the opening. The machine went from suck to blow. The hose spat a group of townspeople back out into the center square. Twenty young adult males 
and 20 young adult females shot out, skidding across the ground. Their journey into the tube and back again had resulted in torn clothes and bruised bodies. It left them in a state of traumatized confusion. With the expulsion completed, the Thalium soldiers about faced and began their exodus from land escape. The wailing of the helpless victims was drowned out by the rhythmic marching of the departing army. Rumbling vibrations emanated from the Titan as it thudded into the center square, lifted the tube, and dragged it away. By the gates, the monstrosity paused to take one last glance around. Vance scrutinized the Titan as it studied its own handiwork. He detected an air of pride in the body language of the metal juggernaut. Vance spat in disgust. He watched the towering enforcer shrinking into the distance, along with its army, aware that he was losing his chance to pursue. He knew if he followed them, there might be an opportunity to rescue the captives. But if he let them go, there was no guarantee he would ever see them again. Damn it. Van thought. Stay or go. He looked at the shell-shocked townspeople. If he abandoned them, they would be on their own, exposed to nomads and the dangers of the wild. Leaving them alone meant letting them die. Damn it. Van thought again. He took a grounding breath, then made his decision. To stay. Why did they do that? Why did they bring those people back? Vant had understood the moment he saw them reintroduced to the town. Virility. Ski looked puzzled. Really? Do I gotta spell it out for you? He yanked her off the ledge. She yelped, surprised. He lowered her to the ground, then dropped down beside her. They took what they needed, they left candidates to re-up the numbers. Think about this. These people have been given a second chance at life. It won't take long for their primal instincts to kick in. There is no aphrodisiac quite like the near-death experience. So they're... Cattle. Whoa. That army will be back when Land Escape's got a whole new herd of livestock. But I wouldn't worry about them returning. Why not? Because I'm gonna stop them. You're gonna what? He charged off, leaving her bewildered. She shook it off and then caught up to him. Vant approached the shivering mass of discarded humans. At the sight of him, one of the townspeople panicked, which created a ripple effect of hysterics. It's okay, Vance said as he removed his weapons. I mean you no harm. Assorted cries still indicated mistrust. He tried again. No, you don't understand. I'm here to help. I'm here to avenge you. No, wait, is that right? Do I avenge you or avenge for you? Blank stares. I feel like I should know this. Anybody? More blank stares. Never mind. Let's get you to safety. Vant and Ski tended to the victims, most of them still catatonic with fear. It was a slow process, checking their injuries and getting them to their feet, but they managed. Vant asked if anyone had a shelter large enough to hold the whole group, and one man offered up his home. They moved through the empty streets as a unit, then piled into the house. The opulence of the dwelling provided a much-needed grounding to those still disturbed, the host, a wealthy local, lit fires and handed out blankets and medical supplies to those in need. Water, food, and booze were also distributed, bringing everyone a step closer to calmer mental states. Ski had a natural way about her while tending to the more delicate personalities. She showed them Cassidy, did horrible impressions of the armored soldiers, and gave extra attention, by way of hugs and hair braids, to the most affected victims. Morale was on the cusp of rising, but it came toppling down again when a woman went into a seizure. Ski instinctively shoved her fingers into the woman's mouth to prevent her from biting off her own tongue. She gritted her teeth and endured the pain until someone found a cloth for her to use. They held the woman down until her state subsided. You'll be okay, Ski said to her. Just relax. My family, my husband, my children. Don't worry about that right now, okay? For all we know, those sparkly soldiers were rounding everyone up for a party, and they'll all be back in the morning. But they're gone. Nah. Just misplaced. On the other side of the reactionary line, several townspeople began forming a militia. They vowed to find and fight the army themselves, no matter what the odds. The leader of the mob stormed about the house, riling up the constituents. I'm going after those bastards. Who's with me? You? 
How about you? He shook some of the people out of their stupors and barked orders. You, help me find whatever weapons you can, and you start collecting pills from everyone. We leave immediately. The hell you do, Vance said. Excuse me? You heard me. You're not going anywhere, because you wouldn't last five minutes out there. Not against that army, not against the nomads, not against the damn rattlesnake. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to calm down. You're going to sit tight until morning. And then we're all going to work together to secure land escape because that is priority number one. The others in the room grew anxious from the tension unfolding between the two men. I'm sorry. And, and who exactly are you to give us orders? Uh, he's the guy who took out a bunch of those things. Bullshit. It's true. I saw it. He beat the stuffing out of him. Ski was on her feet. Fists clenched. Vant waved her off. What's your name? He asked the man. Cheris. Cheris, listen to me. Rushing out there is just going to get you killed. For now, what we need is to regroup. And then, to relax the tension, Vant addressed the rest of the townspeople. I'm going to set this right, and I'm going to find your loved ones. You can count on me. I promise. Turning away dismissively, Cheris said, who died and made you leader? Vant grabbed his arm, leaned in, and squeezed hard. He whispered, So many people. But there's always room for one more. Vant's eyes told no lie. They cut through every last layer of Cheris's bravado. Everyone in the room witnessed a very definitive shift of power as Cheris sat down and took his place with the others. That's better. Vant thought. Tomorrow, Cheris, you're going to prove how strong you are by protecting every single person in this town. Land escapes vulnerable, and before we know it, every nomad for miles is going to stream in here and loot, pillage, riot, and rape everything in sight. So it's up to you. You're going to lead a team to restore its defenses. You've got one mission, and everything depends on it. Secure the gates. Cheris nodded. Then he started to open his mouth, but shut it quickly, and nodded again. Thereafter, a surge in spirits came in the form of two children who had survived the attack. The troublemaker from the Corpobot kiosks and his scrappy little friend showed up at the door, the very kids Vant had previously rescued from abduction. The townspeople welcomed them, as if they were their own children, even though the boy's actual parents were in fact missing. The rascals had taken Vant's advice and remained hidden during the raid, swimming to the center of a pond. The creeps look like they'd sink. The larger child said, trumpeting his cleverness. When it was revealed that Vad had needed to knock sense into the kid multiple times since they had first met, it earned him the nickname Bop. It seemed a bomp on the head was what it took to get him to use his brain. The other child became affectionately known as Frey, as his cuteness inspired an uncontrollable impulse to muss up his hair and leave it frayed. While spirits partially recovered, Weeping and tearful concern for missing friends, family, and loved ones still permeated the house. During a mournful moment, Vant noticed a man who, though he seemed to have his wits about him, kept to himself in the corner. Vant approached. Hey. What's your name? Gino. He answered. Gino. Can I ask you a few questions? Sure. I don't know how much help I can be, though. What happened in that tube? Not exactly a smooth ride, kept slamming into the walls. His eyes rolled back, thinking. I got to the end. Yeah, that's what I need to know. Where did it take you? Big room. Holding area, or, or something. Thought I could smell the ocean. You've been to the ocean before? No. But that's what the smell made me think of. Salt and fish. We get fish from Corpo, and when it's raw, it sits out a while. Same smell. The ocean? Vant muttered to himself. The ocean? He was thinking aloud, but nothing was happening. The ocean? Nothing. Then they tossed some of his back in the tube. Don't know why they picked us, but they did. Now here we are. Here you are. What did the holding area look like? Big. It was dark. Didn't see much. Before I could get a good look around, poof, I'm back in land escape. Vance studied him. You all right? I'm fine. Do I not look all right? Yeah, no, that's what worries me. You seem just fine, which for some reason makes me think that you're not just fine. Oh. Got no family, got no girl. 
Didn't really lose much today except some piss on my way down the tube. Awful for them, though. He glanced toward the others. Wish there was something I could do. There is. Vant put his hand on Gino's shoulder. Get some rest. Tomorrow you're leading a team to sweep the streets for survivors. Gino nodded. Can do. And you? What are you going to do? Avenge. Avenge. 